Hi guys, Jordan here with Motion Array, and I hope you like that little effect that I just showed you because that's what we're gonna be learning how to do today. Now, if you've worked in After Effects for a long time before, you probably know that for things like shape layers, you can add what are called repeaters. Basically, this is a function that allows you to take that original object you created and repeat it in a very specified, and here's the important part, perfectly symmetrical way. But here's the thing, there's actually no native way to do this inside of After Effects for things like images or compositions. But there is a way to work around so that you can get this effect for yourself, and that's what I'm gonna be showing you how to do today. So if you're excited, smash the like button and leave a comment down below for your chance to win three free months at motionarray.com. But let's dive into After Effects and take a look. Okay, so the first thing that you wanna do is place down the item onto your timeline. And it's a shot that I already keyed out and exported with a transparent background. If you needed help with all of that, we have tutorials for each of those steps along the way. Green screening, exporting with a transparent background, etc. But this is similar to what you'd get if you downloaded a stock motion graphic item with a transparent background. Like this is one that I downloaded here for Motion Array, for example. Okay, so I'm going to create a new composition based off of this clip, and then I'm immediately going to pre-compose it. The reason we're doing this is because when we want to repeat this object later, if we wanted to make any changes to our object, we only have to make them once rather than for every single duplicate. And if you wanted to make your life even easier, you can click on this region of interest box here and then click and drag over top of your item so that it only houses the element and not the empty space around it. Then go up to composition, crop comp to region of interest. This will just help to make things a little bit cleaner. Now press the tab key to bring up your composition flowchart and just select the previous composition to get back to square one. Now let's create a new null layer by right clicking here in the empty space and choosing new null object. Name this whatever you want, but I'm gonna call it spread controller. Next, let's go over here to our effects and presets and search for slider control. Drag and drop this onto your null object called controller. Now here's where we actually start to create the effect. First of all, decide what kind of a movement you want to repeat. Do you want it to repeat linearly in a straight line? If so, choose position. And if you wanted to create a circular shape like this, you're gonna be choosing rotation. This is the effect that I'm personally gonna be going for. So I'm gonna to go to the rotation parameter and hold Alt or Option and click. This allows you to enter a custom expression and we're gonna tell our object to do something very specific. We're gonna drop down our controller layer until we get to effects and our slider controller. And we're gonna click on this little spiral here on a rotation parameter and drag it over top of the slider effect. Great. Now what you should get is that your object's rotation is being controlled by the slider here under your controller layer. This is a great start. But how do we get multiple elements? Well, thankfully it's really simple. All we have to do is add one little thing after this expression here. Click on this region to highlight it, and then click on the very end and add this, star index. That's it. So what does this do? Well, it tells After Effects to recognize this object as part of a sequence, basically giving it a number and a position based on the numbers you see here on the left-hand side. So now let's highlight our object and duplicate it by hitting Control or Command D. So now you should see nothing different. But now if we take our slider here and increase or decrease it, you should see your items fanning out and rotating around the center. This is close to what we want, but not quite. You know how if you hold a deck of cards and you wanna fan it out, you don't hold it from the center, you hold it from the corner? Well, that's what we're gonna do. Now that you see how this is gonna work, delete all of the objects except for the bottom one. And now let's move the anchor point by selecting your anchor point tool, shortcut key Y, and click and drag the anchor point of your object to the point around which you want to fan it. Then I'm just gonna decrease the scale a bit and move its position so that it actually has room to rotate around in a circle. If you were to create a circular ring with your objects, the anchor point would be the exact center of the circle. So now let's duplicate these again and see what happens. There we go, we have an awesome looking spread effect of our objects, just by changing the slider amount here. Nice and easy. And we can try to dial in exactly how we want it to look. And once you get it to the point that you want it, you can actually keyframe this amount to start at zero and then increase or decrease to the amount that you want. But if you're going for the look where everything is perfectly equally spread out from each other, there's an easy way to figure this out and get it exact. With each different number of objects, you'll be creating a different shape. So three objects would get you a triangle, four objects would get you a square, 
5 a pentagon, 6 a hexagon, etc. Take the angle of one of those corners, so for a triangle it's 60 degrees, and subtract 60 from 180. This leaves you with 120, which is the number that you key in. For a square, it'll be 90. For a pentagon, it'll be 72. For a hexagon, it'll be 60. You get the idea. And if you didn't want to do any math, then I'm going to leave you the number to key in for up to 10 objects. But now here's the thing. If you want to create just a nice spread and you're having trouble with your objects moving with the spread, you just want your original top object to stay where it is and have everything else move around it, all you have to do is add a second slider to your controller null. Then let's delete all of the objects except for the base one. And in the expression for your remaining object, add this to the end. Plus, and then without clicking out, pick whip this spiral to the new second slider. Perfect. Now you can dial in the amount for this second slider to compensate. And I'll give you a hint, it's probably going to be a multiple of whatever you keyed into the first slider. So if you have three objects in a triangular shape with 120 on the first slider, try 120, 240, 360, etc. Or if you find it's going the wrong way and increasing the speed, try keying in the negative value. Negative 120, negative 240, you get the idea. Once you find out that multiple of how much you have to compensate, for me it's 240, so that's two times the original, pick whip the second slider to the first slider. This will create an expression, and at the end of this, I'm going to add star and then whatever number multiple you found. So for me, that would be two. Basically telling the second slider that do whatever the first slider is doing, except multiply it by two. And again, if you find that it's increasing the speed rather than countering it, just change that number to be a negative value. And now your original object doesn't move, but everything else comes out of it. And what's more, any time you try and move the first slider, the second slider will now automatically keep up with whatever it needs to, to keep your original in the same spot. This has some really cool additional benefits, like letting you add an easy ease in or out, and the whole animation respecting that without having to make any other changes. Okay, so what are some of the other reasons that this is a great method to do this? Well, let's say that you wanted to offset some of the animations of some of these objects. Say you didn't want these all to be perfectly timed, but to have the animation slightly offset, so that it doesn't look like a perfect mirror. You can actually move these compositions in time, so now they start and end in different places within their respected animation, but overall the animation we created isn't impacted at all. It's so cool. Okay, so we've created a perfect circle, but now let's say that we wanted to create a spread so that if you had an odd number of items, let's say you wanted the middle one to be the one that stays in front. All you have to do is go down to your second slider expression and change this multiple to one less than the total number of items. So if you have five items and you wanted to keep the center one, that would be five minus one, which is four. And then we get something like this. Awesome. But now what happens if you want the middle item to be at the very top and have everything else be behind it? Maybe for example, you wanted there to be a little bit of overlap in between all of these. And so it becomes really obvious that the middle centered item isn't the one at the very top. I'm going to walk you through that process, although fair warning, it is a little bit more complicated. Break your shot up into two components. If you have five objects, you'll have three that look like this, and another three that look like this. To do that, simply delete objects until you're only left with three, or however many you want to be on one wing of this animation and then adjust your slider multiple so that the topmost one stays where it is. This will be one wing. Highlight all of these and go to pre-compose. And label it left wing or right wing or whatever wing of this animation it is for you. Now go to this new composition and highlight all of these and copy them with Ctrl or Command C. Then go back to your main composition and paste these back and invert the process. And I'm just going to quickly hide this first wing so it's not distracting. Delete the top two objects and make a negative before the expression on your object layer. And if you already had a negative in the original, delete it to make it positive. And duplicate your object another two times. You should be left with your object spreading in the other direction. 
but it'll probably be off by just a tad, so change your second slider multiple to be negative, and if it's already negative, get rid of that to make it positive. Now it's going the opposite direction, but with the correct cup still on top. And now when we turn on our other wing, we can see that the animation looks great. But to clean it up a little bit more, pre-compose this set as well, and label it to be right wing or whatever opposite label will help you to distinguish this. Now you can play back your footage and see this delicious final result. And if you like the animation, but you don't like the final orientation of your grouping, you can add a new null object and parent both of these wing compositions to follow your null. Now change your null's position, rotation, and scaling to your liking. So now we have this awesome looking spread effect. And this is a great opportunity to highlight maybe my favorite part of using this process. I actually don't like the angle that each of these cups are at. And there's a really easy way to change them all at the same time. Go back to the base cup layer that we first started with. You can find it in your project or you can just dive into multiple compositions all the way down until you reach it. And here we can just change this original cup to have a different orientation to make it look exactly the way we want. And as long as we make sure that the object isn't leaving the boundaries of the frame, when we go back to our main composition, we can see that everything updates in real time and the animation remains perfectly intact. This is so awesome. But this has an even deeper purpose than just retweaking the angle or size of your objects. You can actually completely replace the object that you're doing this animation to. So let's go back to this base cup composition, and I'm actually going to replace the cup with this motion graphic I downloaded for Motion Array. And instead of placing down this other motion graphic on top and deleting the cup, you can actually just replace it in one fell swoop. Make sure that your original cup layer is highlighted, and then hold Alt and click and drag this new motion graphic on top of the old one. And there we go, it replaces it and actually maintains the position scale rotation parameters that we originally made to it. But I'm actually going to change mine here a little bit, I'm going to reframe it so that it's in the center. You can use these align tools here to help make it perfectly centered. And then I'm just going to decrease the size here. And now when we go back to our main composition, we can see that our animation remains perfect, except it's just happening with a different object. This is so cool. And if you wanted to even add some further polish, you can nest all of these together into a final composition and then add some flair like a layer style drop shadow. Turn it into a 3D layer and add a camera that moves to make it look like the objects themselves are moving. And you can end up with something like this. Guys, I really hope that you found this tutorial helpful and that you're gonna be able to find some interesting use cases to put it to work for yourself. Like I mentioned at the beginning, if you wanted to win three months free at motionray.com, all you have to do is leave a comment. And next week, I'm gonna be choosing one lucky winner to get a free three month subscription. Tell me what situations you would use this effect for. But guys, that's it for me. Thank you so much for watching. And I can't wait to see you in the next one. Bye.